Hi everybody and welcome to Cindy Certified Recipes. I'm Cindy and this is the third of a three-part holiday turkey series. In part one, I make that beautiful golden stock and in part two, I make my family favorite stuffing. If you haven't seen those videos, please go to my channel and check those out. Here in part three, I'll be showing you how to get the turkey prepared to be stuffed and get it in the oven, then later making silky gravy using that beautiful stock. So stick around. After you've unwrapped your turkey and brought it home, you're gonna wanna give it a good rinse and a good clean and get those giblets out. So let's give it a bit of a rinse. one end or the other, you're going to find the giblets. So it depends on the turkey. Sometimes they're all here and sometimes they're back here. There they are. I like to save the neck and these little guys. Put them in the pot. I and the heart. That's the heart. I don't like to save the liver because the liver, I like to make a little additional stock with that and the liver will make your stock cloudy. And so the liver gets thrown away. So then lift it up and give it a good rinse. Put some water in there. Drain and then do the other end. That's good. Turn off the water and then get all that water out as best as you can. Once you're done with this, you'll give your sink a good cleaning. I like to sit it up here on some paper towels. And this is a little cling wrap here so that I can give it a good pat down. You want it nice and dry inside and out. Just for your reference, this is a 22 pound fresh turkey. It's been my experience to help to get the best results possible as far as a juicy, flavorful bird is to look for a fresh turkey and never frozen fresh turkey. I'm gonna turn that around. He's a tad heavy. <laughs> And wipe it out. I also, when I do this, sometimes on the uh, type of turkey, there'll be little parts in there that you don't necessarily want mixed up with your stuffing. Little globs of fat or other things. And you want to Give it a good look in there and make sure you don't have any of those things. And if you do, just pull them out, throw them away. And there's ribs in there that you want to stick the paper towel down into. They act like little wells and get all that moisture out. The drier, the better. And this, this guy here, I like to cut those off. And sometimes I'll throw it in with the stock. Like that. And you can leave these plastic ties on the legs. I like to tie the legs myself, uh, but these are oven friendly, and uh, but I don't like them. So uh, I take them out and it is a struggle, but they do come out. And like, here's a little blob of fat I don't like. So I'm just gonna cut that off and throw it away. And that gives me a nice opening for stuffing. Here in the next step, I have just a 
a little bit of the salt and pepper mix here. And I pour a little bit of that in my hand because I'm going to rub that inside the cavity. Do the other side. And now I'm ready to start stuffing that bird. In order to stuff the smaller end of the turkey, I like to stand it up in a bowl in the sink, and that makes it stand up nice uh, so you have good access and you're not fumbling with it. And then the best way is just to start grabbing some stuffing. Don't squeeze it, keep it nice and light, and just kind of place it down in there. I like to loosen the skin a little bit on the breast meat and push it just a little bit up in there. Gives me a little more space to get some stuffing up in there. Don't press it in there you, too tightly. You just wanna kinda loosely get it in there. This will expand when it cooks. And if a little falls out, that's fine. Actually, I'm gonna show you a little trick by actually putting extra stuffing in the pan, but we'll get to that. So you can see I'm pressing a little bit, but not too, too hard. And that's just about there. Maybe another handful. This turkey has a lot of skin that I can work with to cover it. So that's about right. And I like using these trussing pins. And every year it's always uh, a little different with these turkeys as to how much skin you have to work with. So break out your sewing skills here a bit and try to fold the skin as best as you can and just start pinning it. You'll take these out when you start pulling the stuffing out when the turkey is rested. There we go. That looks nice and tight. And now on to the next step. I want to show you what I use to roast my turkey is I have this nice roasting pan. It's not an expensive pan. You don't need an expensive pan. Um, but one thing I do look for in a roasting pan is that it has this lip. And this one does have a nice big dome lid that you'll see. Uh, but I do have other roasting pans that, that have the lip and sometimes I won't use the dome. Uh, and I'll tent the turkey with foil. And that lip is important to get that foil around. So always, in my opinion, look for a roasting pan with a lip. And I like to keep the turkey off the bottom. And so I get one of these, I use one of these racks, this black rack here. And that way I can lift it out of the pan when I'm ready to do the gravy. And then I like to get the turkey then off the rack onto a flat surface to be carved, and that's where this chain turkey lifter comes into play, where then I can easily grab these handles and lift it off that rack and onto a flat carving surface. And so that is how I set up my roasting pan. Here we are now at the stuffing stage. And so I have our turkey all set up on the rack system, and it's time to just start grabbing some handfuls of stuffing and getting it in that cavity. So again, we're just going to push it in lightly. You don't want to pack it in. So 
See these little sides here where you can loosen the skin away? Those are excellent opportunities to put stuffing. You can also add herbs in there if you like, uh, but this is what I've done for 40 years <laughs> and that's what I stick with. Plus then when I'm testing it later, it gives more opportunity to nibble. <laughs> I, can, I need a little bit of room to tie the legs up. And then I'll stuff a little more stuffing on there. So maybe just a little bit more here. That looks good. Now on to the next stage. In this step, I like to tie up the legs a bit to hold in all that stuffing. It also makes it look a little nicer. So get yourself some butcher's twine and just cut off about two arm lengths. You can always make it shorter when you're done. And I don't have, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, a tried and true tying method. I just start tying a knot like that and then go around the leg and around the other leg. Keep going around, pulling them together. And then that little piece there, I go around three times. Tie it down. Because when you go three times, it, hold, it kind of holds that string there. Give it a good knot. I'm gonna tie that one more time. Use your scissors and just snip it off. And that's how I tie my legs. Now that I have them all nice and tied up, I like to add a little more stuffing on top here. Just kind of lightly press it on. Makes it look very pretty. And a trick I do before it goes in the oven is I will put a few little chunks of stuffing into the pot. And that way when the drippings go down in there, it not only adds a little extra flavor to the drippings, but a little extra color also. There we go. And then I will pour hands are slippery, a little bit of that stock in the pan. Just a little bit. There we go. And now the next step. So now before I put it in the oven, I like to soften some butter with a heaping teaspoon of salt and pepper. You can add herbs to this if you like, maybe thyme or whatever you like. And then I just like to slather it on there, get it all over the turkey. You can use a brush, but I just find my hands work better. <laughs> Then 
This is a stick of salted butter. And that turkey's ready for the oven. One of the things I wanna tell all of you is that it's very important when you're stuffing a turkey that your turkey is cold and your stuffing is cold. So that's why I normally make my stuffing the day before. You make it a couple days before and you keep it in the refrigerator, but you always wanna stuff your cold turkey with cold stuffing and you have to stuff it the day you cook it. You cannot stuff it in advance and then put your turkey in the refrigerator and wait to cook it. That's, you can't do that. So always cold turkey, cold stuffing. And now I'm gonna put my thermometer in, run the nice meaty breast area there. And what we're looking for on that is about 175 on the thermometer, uh, cause once it rests, it's gonna keep cooking another five degrees to 180. And now we're gonna put the lid on and get this in the oven. So I always make extra stuffing because we love stuffing. And what doesn't fit in the bird, I like to get just a, a baking dish and I'll line it with a little heavy duty foil. Uh, because if I just, if you just put the stuff in the foil, sometimes it leaks out and I'll just spoon the rest of that stuffing into this bowl and into the foil. That way when you ball up the foil, it kind of acts like a mock turkey cavity. And then I will add a little bit of stock to this. And it will go into the oven about an hour and a half before the turkey is done. I'll press it just a little bit like I would if it was inside the turkey. And because it's not getting moisture from the turkey, I'll add just a little bit of stock to it. And then close up that foil. ready to put in the oven down the road. Here I'm warming up the stock so it's ready to be used as I'm making the gravy. I take out some of those pieces of soft brown stuffing I added earlier and reserve it on a plate to be added back to the gravy later. One of my secrets I learned from my mom is to always use Wonder when I make any kind of gravy. It mixes in quickly, practically eliminating dealing with lumps. I'll keep adding the Wondra and mixing it in till just about all the fat has been soaked up and the roux has formed. You'll also notice how these caramelized bits in the pan help give you that nice color. I'll use a whisk to smooth things out, then alternate to a wooden spoon which helps to get up all those caramelized bits, adding color and flavor. Once a good roux has formed, start ladling in your warm stock. Give it a good whisk.
From here, on medium high heat, on two of my burners, the gravy will go into stages of thickening and adding stock until the gravy reaches a stable stage and you'll notice good consistency and the rapid thickening subsides. It's a process making quality gravy, which is why I felt it important for you to see these stages to where the gravy needs to cook at a bubbling point to reduce. This is where I like to add in those brown soft pieces of stuffing from the bottom of the roasting pan. They will dissolve in and you'll notice them enhancing that beautiful color. So normally I just rely on my taste buds to decide if it's Cindy certified. But this year I'm very happy to say the Grand Master who taught me most of what I know was here to supervise. And the verdict is... I am your official taste tester. Huh? Mm. That is absolutely divine. <laughs> Very delicious. <laughs> <laughs> How is that for wow factor? Picture worthy every time. Full of flavor, juicy and so delicious. And remember, if it's time tested, top-notch ingredients, and the talk of the table, it's Cindy certified.